Hey guys, this is Homayoon from Homayoon TV. So in this episode, I'm going to give you some cool tips and tricks about composing and production. From voice leading to actual production tips about arpeggiation and some other stuff. Please keep on watching. Hey guys, Saibomi here! So first of all we're going to make a music fragment by voice leading and then we will assign sounds to it and use a few different production techniques to get inspired for our future projects. So what is voice leading? Voice leading or part writing is the linear progression of individual melodic lines. This will then create natural interaction with each layer and it will lead to the creation of harmonies. The most important factors when composing with voice leading are independence of parts and contrary motion. Independence of parts means that the voices should have their own space so we can imagine them as melodies. And contrary motion will help our ear to hear each layer as an individual melody. Before Humayun continues the rest of the video, listen to these two examples of fantastic voice leading. See you guys later, Saibomi out! Alright, so for every different composer, every, every person who's doing production or compositions, there are many, many ways of, of, of composing and uh, working and, and creating content. Like, uh, you, can, you can compose by using spectralism, you can compose with atonalism, serialism, um, voice leading, uh, counterpoint, different ways of harmonies like harmony by thirds by fourths by fifths by seconds by by uh, well basically anything um, but now I'm gonna talk about voice leading and and uh, how we can use voice leading to create content uh, and then we can move from that to uh, the production phase because this is phase one we which will actually focus on just the notes just the pitches till we have a clear outline of, of our production and then later we will move to actually giving it to sounds and this is the inspired by um, composing for orchestra and, and larger ensembles imagine from beethoven's time the, he, he would he wouldn't just start writing the piece in a uh, in just, you know in a large score for orchestra you know, because that's just too complicated with with many many details uh, so he would just go to a short score a piano version or, or two pianos or other composers would just go to just to uh, a bunch of normal staffs you know so it's, it's really small and then you can just focus on the music itself on the colors on the on how pitches are gradually moving together and uh, and the structure and then later they would uh, embellish it and and uh, you know make it more more awesome give it to different instruments and then th this would be the next phase as it would be like arranging it you know orchestrating it as uh, this phase can also be used in, in creating uh, content and uh, for production you know so we shouldn't miss this because it's amazing and it gives us great results before we just jump into our uh, production software so let's continue all right so what I'm gonna do now is that uh, I'm just gonna write a very simple uh, melody which actually it is not going to be uh, 
the final melody that you can use on your own score because this is not a production um, video it's about op uh, it's about me trying to uh, help you to open your vision about uh, composing or uh, producing because that would be the second part of the video okay now we have a very simple line here and uh, I'm gonna add another line I'm gonna add a bass line to it by thinking that this is an A minor scale or a Aeolian scale now let's say if it's a, if it's that then we should probably start with an A right and then we go to a B and you might ask, okay, how am I putting these? I'm going to tell you in a bit. So, the way I'm doing this is that first you can have a whole knowledge of what you're going to do in, in a um, horizontal, in a vertical way. But now I'm looking at it all vertical. So you can also do it for yourself. You can you can change it. You can say, hey, this note goes down. And, and then the next one goes here and then there. And then you can figure it out. And the thing is, you might think, okay, this, this sounds a bit noobish or, you know, like okay i need to know what i'm doing but sometimes it's it's good to change your perspective you know not think about those one three six or or the other chords you know just 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 go to see what you can find you know and many many musicians and and composers uh, compose like this you know so you don't have to just stick with the with your motor function that you play on your piano or or other things so basically what i'm doing now is that i'm using voice leading which is leading my voices, individuality, to create content, to create my progression. Um, now I'm gonna add another layer. Oop. Yeah. So I'm gonna add an F, and then I'm gonna add E. By knowing, actually, this can be now an E minor. And the first one could have been an A, but now we put an F here, right? So let's see. now I'm gonna put an C here, or yeah, maybe not. Let's put an E. And actually, this video is more or less unscripted. I just wrote this down because I thought it would be more uh, fun and and spontaneous to to watch for you guys also because. I don't know what I'm doing also for here because you I mean you know it's more fun but anyway let's go now uh, let's listen to it ah, it's already it's sounding plausible and nice now I'm gonna add another layer the thing is when you add layers to your voicings you are making them more richer and, and you're make, giving them more personality. You know, it's like knowing about uh, n getting to know someone. So you know, okay, if, if they are tall, if they are short, if they are wearing uh, black, wearing white, or, or, you know, different details about someone. And then you can make your story uh, with these contents. And sometimes you're like, okay, I don't want anything. I just want a melody. You know, you want to you wanna have ambiguity or, or, or things like that. But um, anyway, let's continue. So I wanted to make this voice into a downstem voice. And don't forget that this, the, the, I'm using Dorico right now, but, uh, and after this, I'm gonna use FL Studio, but you can use whatever you want. And, and I'm not really giving any guidance on uh, the software. So I'm just using it and I'm just, I'm just gonna give you what you can do on your own. And uh, actually, I do have some tutorials on Dorico, <coughs> which you can find my in my channel. Sorry, <coughs> I'll put the link um, up somewhere here. Uh, right now, yeah, actually, I wrote this <laughs> progression down so I don't forget it. Now we already have a progression here. Let's listen to it. Great, but I want to do one thing extra. I want to say, hey, this A is going up, right? A to B and C. I want to say, hey, I don't want it to be a, uh, an A. Uh, I don't want it to be a B. I want to make it a B flat. Still having voice leading. And then I'm going to make this into a B flat as well to have coherency. Now, one thing to, to, to learn for yourself and to discover for yourself is that how intervals 
sound together or how how uh, different colors they have together so if you add a fifth or if you add a second uh, what will they sound like so this is this is also the way i uh, i uh, wrote this progression as well before um all right and uh let's see and i'm gonna add another e here because why not just because it's a sound that we want and i can add actually add another voice but i didn't want to this is already enough and then I'm gonna add the E here. I'm oh, sorry, add an F here. Because then we'll have a sense of uh, complete finish here. Well, actually, this will be A also. Because it started with here and then it goes to there, right? Now let's listen to it. Now, as you notice, this made it more you know, more closed, more, more gloomy, because actually the, the mode changed into, from Aeolian, it changed to a Frisian mode, because when you have an A minor scale, when you bring the second down, uh, you will get uh, a Frisian scale. So that's the B flat here. how beautiful and, and you know like jazzy uh, these are being uh, like, like these are sounding and the reason is that I really didn't think about having like naming the chords from the beginning I only thought about melody and uh, horizontal way of looking otherwise you could have said okay this part can be an A minor without the third with an added six uh, and 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 you know and so on uh, you could name them and you could name them even now, you know, there is not just one way of looking at music, but many ways. Welcome to the second part of the video. If you haven't subscribed already, please do, as it will help me create more content. So, what we're going to do now is that uh, I just imported my uh, MIDI transcription from Dorico to FL Studio, but you can also import it to any DAW that you have or want, Ableton Live, Logic, whatever. So let's see, where is it? Yep, it's right here. And let's just listen to it once. Mm -hmm. If you notice the second part has a you know as a different kind of feeling to it it's because there is no B flat in there I mean here is like uh, and harmonically spelled here as a sharp but there is no B flat there so it gives you uh, another kind of feeling it's a bit open it's more you know like a more jazzy and and this is more modal here but this one is more jazzy and more open but anyway, um, so the first trick that we're going to try now is uh, augmentation and diminution. Let's see. I'm going to put these guys. I'm going to open. Well, actually, let's do it here. I'm going to make a new track with flex. Where are you, flex? Yep. Yeah. All righty. Mm-hmm. I'm going to open it, paste. So this is the first uh, progression, which we're going to just focus on for today. So the first trick is to do augmentation. Now let's hear what the default preset is. Already sounds great. But what we're going to do now is to uh, know what augmentation is. So basically augmentation is increasing the length of the uh, whole passage or whatever you have. So this is it. Okay. Now the use is to uh, when you have augmentation, you can uh, you can use it for longer textures or or if you have even less chords or more chords, now you can spread it out and, and have a new uh, kind of feeling to it. So basically it's the same thing. Right? Pretty cool. 
And now the other one is diminution, so it's basically the opposite. Before it was still here, the timing, but now we're gonna make it small. So you can also do it as, uh, you know, that the length can be as big as you want or as small as you want. But now I'm gonna go do something cool. So this is too fast, right? Oh, we had a huge problem here, let's see. Mm, hopefully it won't come back again, but let's see. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna give this uh, something punchy. Yeah, this one's good. Now check this out with this kind of diminution. <laughs> So you, you know you get it, right? It's like getting new inspiration with, with different sounds and just the same uh, same texture that we had, the same pitches, but new new things to explore. All right, now let's listen to this. Now if you have if you make it longer, you can make a cool whole texture out of it, uh, baseline or whatever. And you know you get you get what I mean, right? Okay, the next step is arpeggiation. So we have the same progression as before. Now I'm gonna uh, use some arpeggiation, but well, you can uh, actually arpeggiate manually, or you can use your uh, the 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 you know the inside uh, arpeggiator, your native arpeggiator in your software or your hardware. So you can do many different ways. Uh, do it in many different ways, but let's just try. I like this function here and. FL Studio, which are like pretty cool stuff here. Um, now look, if we have like two notes, then pretty cool. Now you can give it different ranges. It goes up, or just change the pattern. I'm gonna just put one. Where is this? Oh yeah, this one was from before, which is pretty cool. Right? I mean, it's great. It's it, you get inspiration and just put a reverb on it or change change the sound and uh, many many cool things will pop into your head. Anyway, uh, the next one is to use chopping. So chopping is actually to having the uh, having to cut the the length of the notes to create new rhythms and what I mean by that is to do a chop here and let's listen to it and if we play around oh, okay a lot of cool stuff uh, yeah so there's a lot of different things uh, which you can do Oh, this one's also modifying the pitches. Cool. So basically, it's it's a bit like different. Uh, it's a bit like manually cutting the notes and, and creating new rhythms. But then you have an automatic way, and sometimes it's uh, more inspirational to do it automatic or or manually like this. And uh, this applies to arpeggiation as well. So you can also arpeggiate manually if you need something uh, special that that really it's you hear it in your mind, but you cannot recreate it with the uh, embedded arpeggiator. You can do it like this. All right. The next thing is to apply detuning to certain pitches, and then you know you then then you'll get a actual natural uh, chorus it will sound like a strings uh, you know like a string orchestra where you have uh, all these players and they're all playing fantastic but there is a little bit of, of detuning there and that's why it always sounds so rich because of this interaction of these little pitches uh, changing all the time and uh, with that you can actually make a creative process out of it or just use it as a um, as a main thing in your music to write quarter tone music or or uh, just whatever you like so let's just try it out um, I'm gonna add uh, no. no let's see 
Oh, by the way, these that the, the stuff that you hear are from the embedded uh, the arpeggiator. So this is like actually an arpeggiated thing uh, being sound. So I'm not changing anything. Oh yeah, let's just try the first thing. So this is the first uh, stock and default preset. Um, I'm now I'm gonna modify some pitches. Let's say this A, we can just take it up a little bit or down. So channel pitch, whoops, sorry. Where is it? Note fine pitch, yeah. Okay, and as you can see, we're adjusting it. Like if you if you look up here, when I'm adjusting it, you'll see 50 cents, 50 cent, oh, um, 20 cent, 30 cents, whatever. Now let's just adjust them to 40 cents. So when you have a tone, there are, till the next tone is 100 cents and 50 cents is uh, like a semitone and 25 cents is a quarter tone. And that's how you can, you'll know how much you're adjusting it. Uh, let's see. Did you hear that? It's not. It's sounding a bit detuned and it's, it's, it sounds actually pretty cool. like really a bit like a you know oriental sound or, or more heavy sound because because if you remember we we talked about this a uh, and we made it into a uh, sorry we talked about the B and then we made it into B flat but now this this a when we push it up it's almost like a, a B flat but actually it's like a quarter sharp so it gives more uh, more mm, you know like it gives it a more heavy texture than it what what it already is with this even with this B flat right here so yeah so basically this was it for today and I really hope that you enjoyed the video please uh, don't forget to subscribe and if you have any questions comment or suggestions for new videos in the future put them in the comment section and see you later and bye bye